Okay guys, so I'm making this video for Wednesday. Um, I know that a lot of you guys had some confusion about the worksheet. So the one that we assigned yesterday, the Sherpa Life argument text element is gonna be due at 11.59 today because a lot of people had issues with it. So I wanna make sure that you guys have time to do that. So I wanted to talk through a couple of the questions that um, I included on the lecture. So if you go to that second set of boxes, um, on the front page to where it says, to what audience does this essay seem targeted? I want you guys to think about um, who do you think that he's trying to make this argument to? He's not making this argument to Sherpas. They already understand their own plight. He's making the argument to groups of people who may not understand the plight of the Sherpas. So make sure that you kind of understand who he's making that argument to. Something I might put on there um, would be Western climbers. Um, just for reference, the West refers to Europe and the United States generally. Um, climbers, tourists, and the climbing industry. That is who this argument is based at. This isn't necessarily going to be, um, sorry, this isn't going to be geared towards people who don't climb or are from the Himalayas because they, like I said, they understand their own plight. So make sure that you understand who he's making this argument to. So the main claim of the essay. Okay, um, I know that usually your claim is going to be in the first paragraph. And this particular piece, the claim is the very last sentence of paragraph five. Um, so basically the whole point of this essay is that very little value is given to Sherpa life. And he gives you all of these concrete details, all of these facts, statistics, to show that to you. So even though the Sherpas are, make vital contributions to the climbing industry, the, they're valued very little and that needs to change. Your counter argument is where the author's going to acknowledge the idea of shutting down the climbing business and that's gonna be in paragraph four. Um, he wants the climbing business to be to stay there because he understands that the value the Sherpas, um, the value that the Sherpas get from that, um, you know, they can make 10 times more money in three months than most people in Nepal make in a year. So he understands the importance of the industry to the Sherpas. Um, the author's rebuttal and the counter argument, he rebuts the counter argument saying that it would anger everyone involved, including the Sherpas, because they would lose their very, very valuable income. Okay, so in the appeals on the next part, cite an emotional appeal the author has used. Something I want you guys to realize, so I told y'all a couple of weeks ago that your essays need to be full circle, that the introduction and the conclusion need to make a circle. They need to come back and all make sense, okay? It all needs to be interconnected. Um, so paragraph one, there, he's talking about the 16 Sherpas who die in an avalanche, and he's using a logical appeal. He is giving you facts, statistics, times, days, how they died. He's giving you very, very hard information to kind of appeal to your logical side. Oh my gosh, 16 people died in, av in an avalanche. That's horrible. But then in that very last paragraph, he's using an emotional appeal. He's making you think about how that affects their families and how those people think about it. You're having... 16 funerals and 16 men are added to the photos of people who died on Everest and that creates a mental image and that's creating a an emotional appeal okay I want you to tell me how well you think the appeals achieve the writer's purpose and I want you to cite some details for that so that's going to be your answer that's not necessarily something I can help you with because that's your opinion um what do you guys think is notable about the essay's conclusion. Um, like I said, it comes full circle and I really like that. I'm really big about things coming full circle, your intro and your conclusion relating to each other. Um, so just think about how he's talking about these 16 men in, men in a very logical way in the first paragraph and then he's think, talking about them in a very emotional way in the last paragraph, okay? And then I want you to tell me if you're, if the conclusion that the author comes to is persuasive. Do you feel like Sherpa's lives need to be valued more? Okay, so then we're going to talk a little bit about 
rhetorical devices. These are going to be patterns of words and ideas that writers use for a particular purpose. For example, they may empathize, emphasize certain ideas, suggest the writer's attitude, add rhythm and power to a text, or make it more memorable. Common rhetorical devices include parallelism, or sometimes it's called parallel construct, rhetorical questions, and charged language. So you're going to have quite a bit of that throughout this story. I gave you a chart on the uh, thing, on the lecture, that's going to go through and kind of explain what each of those is and give an example of that. And then, let's see. I want you guys to think about how the author uses these things, how he's using the parallel constructs, the rhetorical questions, and the charged language. Um, and how does that affect how you feel about the story, about the Sherpas? Um, so that's really all I have for this. I want you guys, if you're having issues, please let me know. Um, like I've said before, I have a lot of superpowers, but mind reading is not one of them. So if you're having issues, you need to be telling me. Um, if you don't understand what we're doing right now, please tell me now because what we're doing this week builds into what we're doing next week. And next week, we're going to be writing an argumentative essay. So make sure that you understand kind of these little pieces of this. Um, the, the value of Sherpa Life is a really great example of an argumentative piece. Um, it uses a lot of appeals. It is full circle. It's real life. And it is organized very, very well. Um, so just make sure that you understand and you can identify what is that claim? What are these concrete details? Where are these appeals? Make sure that you understand that. And if you don't, please get on my Google Meet. I had a Google Meet um, on Tuesday afternoon and only one person showed up. So if you guys, I just assume that that means you guys understand it and you don't have any questions. So make sure that you're doing that and taking that initiative because if you're having issues, I can't help you if I don't know what your issues are. So make sure that you're doing that and best of luck. And um, I hope to see you guys soon on a Google Meet.